folks, the number one Mountain Dew fan from the Internet Jukebox here with another album review, and today I wanted to talk about the new Pretty Girl Jade record, Ultra Fantasy Ruby Red. You know, it's funny, despite my channel being pretty much objectively on the underground of YouTube or the underground of music discussion platforms, whatever you would like to really consider me a part of, I rarely review music that could be truly considered underground. I mean, obviously, I review a lot of bands and artists that don't have a huge amount of monthly Spotify listeners or anything like that, but at the same time, if you truly want to define underground as completely obscure music that is going wildly underappreciated with no circles having major discussions about it despite it being excellent work nonetheless, then that rarely comes up in the context of my channel. The most obscure I usually get is the kind of stuff that Rate Your Music tends to like that doesn't really get any attention anywhere else, and frankly, that's still a lot of people, but Today, that kind of changes a little bit with this new studio album from California producer, songwriter, musician, Pretty Girl Jade, and her new studio album, Ultra Fantasy Ruby Red. And admittedly, I was pretty hesitant to review this one. It was submitted to me by Jade herself, and normally I'm kind of indifferent to the idea of artists submitting their own work, not based on any sort of principles or anything like that, but just because I tend to be more interested when someone is excited about work that wasn't made by them. However, I could definitely understand how someone would feel this way about an album like this. I'm honestly surprised that this record hasn't picked up more traction in select groups and circles, as I really do think that Ultra Fantasy Ruby Red is a really fantastic, and at least up to this point, massively underappreciated record from an up-and-coming musician that I could see doing even bigger and better things in the future. I mean, if I'm being completely honest, Ultra Fantasy Ruby Red has a lot of the markings of a much more experienced and beloved musician than Pretty Girl Jade actually is. A lot of the qualities that make this record as good as it is sound like they belong to an album that's been made by a person who's been a debuted artist for a number of years at this point, when in reality the earliest work that Jade has put out under the Pretty Girl Jade name only goes back to the beginning of this year, back in March of 2024. But here we are with Ultra Fantasy Ruby Red, a record that feels like a very experienced, almost veteran-esque, but still extremely youthful figure within experimental music. It really does feel like an extremely impressive album in a lot of regards. First of all, the production on this record is generally pretty phenomenal overall, a lot of it having an extremely DIY, glitchy kind of feel to it that I think suits the album aesthetically extremely well. A lot of the sounds here lean into heavily digitized, fuzzed out sounds, but in a way that comes across as natural from a creative standpoint, the record never feeling like it's inherently relying on digital tools rather than more traditional means of production and performance for the simple sake of just managing to create an album on a budget. Rather, it does feel like an album that genuinely needs to sound the way it does to come across as earnest and as heartfelt as it does, with, again, this incredibly blurry and at times even somewhat surreal, disorienting sonic aesthetic that, again, I think works extraordinarily well for this record overall, and it certainly helps that the production makes everything work really well in terms of actual tone, there being a sort of underlying mournful tone to everything here, despite all of the, again, more kind of glitchy aesthetics, and that isn't to mention some of the almost shoegazy kind of tones that you get here and there, while the record certainly never really embraces that influence of any kind, really, I also do think that it is at least somewhat present in terms of there being a very melancholic, looming atmosphere throughout this entire record, and from the perspective of production alone, this is a genuinely really great album, and again, it circles back to my point that this feels like an album made by someone who has been putting out material like this for much, much longer than she actually has. And I think the sort of digicore aesthetic that's going on here is really interesting as well, as it does take the basic genre ideas that come with that sound that have been utilized from a ton of different places, from artists like Jane Remover to other artists within more of the sort of cloud rap and trap scene, like Meat Computer, for example. I feel like those ideas are incorporated here in a really interesting way, kind of coming across as a plethora of interpretations of what it means to create digicore as a sound, with a lot of the heavily pitched up vocals being present here, a lot of the really fuzzed out production being present here, yet at the same time, there being a sort of more industrial quality to this record in a lot of places, a bit of a 
heavier quality, both stylistically and even emotionally in some places, that I feel really sells this album as something that isn't that derivative of records and artists that came before it, but rather something that takes ideas that have been fairly popular and relevant for the past handful of years within a lot of alternative scenes and subcultures, and taking them in a direction that feels unique to itself as an album. And Jade, as an artist, is very much capable of taking those sounds that have obviously influenced her and molding them into something new for her own work. And I think that's very admirable, and the outcome really does show just how successful those results are. Now, as great as this record is from a production-based standpoint, that can only make an album go so far. There are plenty of well-produced albums that just aren't that noteworthy because there's nothing else that they have going for them. However, that is most certainly not the case with Ultra Fantasy Ruby Red, and in particular, the songwriting really does sell this album as not just a well-produced, very heavily DIY-oriented record, but an extremely heartfelt and at times brutally honest depiction of one's own personal struggles in a variety of different ways. And again, I think it's a very admirable thing for Jade to be putting forward such a personal record, especially when she's capable of conveying those feelings of frustration and agony as well as she does here in such a poetic and oftentimes intimate way. For example, the track Perfect Girl is a song about feeling extremely strongly about a woman being in love with her, but at the same time recognizing that you are in a poor state mentally and emotionally, and how you don't want to be with her not because you have no feelings for her, but because you don't want to end up using her just to stay alive, as the song says, because you helped me stay alive. And that is an extremely poignant thing to be writing about in any regard whatsoever, and to hear it in such a well-made, well-produced, and emotive song that's barely over a minute is beyond impressive. And that isn't to mention some of the lengthier tracks on this record that are in turn allowed to go into a bit more detail with the topics that they end up bringing up. For example, the album opener Biological Genocide, one of the major highlights on the record for me personally, a song very cryptically at times dealing with the topic of transness and transgender identity, and it's an incredibly powerful song, especially with its final verse, some of its final lines saying, I can't change it, I can't change it. It's such raw and unfiltered frustration and anger against oneself, against the world, against reality. It's so fearless at the same time, but it manages to come across as extremely vulnerable, and I would almost say that it's journal or diary entry-esque, but at the same time, there's this very personable and relatable feeling that Jade is capable of conveying in her music that makes me say it feels more like a one-on-one -on -one talk with someone, or maybe Jade writing an extremely long DM to somebody. I think you get my point. It comes across as a very heartfelt, earnest, one-on-one -on -one kind of record, and that kind of thing for this kind of album is absolutely stunning and extremely difficult to pull off effectively. The album closer Apostasy is particularly an extremely powerful and strikingly written song, with the song very fittingly, according to its title, dealing with the idea of rejecting faith or religion after being heavily wronged by that exact topic and people within those groups, which, considering this record's constant discussion of gender identity and a constant oppression of the LGBT plus community in real life from very more often than not conservative religious groups is extremely fitting and brutally realistic in a way that is simultaneously comforting to hear coming from another person and extremely unpleasant in the best way possible to hear considering it makes you face the bleak reality of the world in a number of ways, but particularly the way that the track ends off with the lines, I don't care if you think we need balance, because she puts it all on one side, don't ask what side, before the repetition of the phrase you don't give a fuck, and then the album just ends. It's a really powerful ending to the record, because it really does feel like it's something that's simultaneously hopeless in the sense that one can recognize that they, as an individual, have no power against a system that is inherently designed to go against them, yet at the same time somewhat hopeful in knowing that you are still capable of rejecting those ideas, standing for yourself and fighting against them alongside the same people that are being hurt alongside you. It's maybe a quality of the record that I personally look too much into or attempt to find too much hope or sorrow in, but Generally speaking, I think it's a very powerful ending to the record because it is completely honest in what I personally interpret as 
hugely mixed emotions. Again, just another example of the really strong and emotionally vulnerable songwriting being delivered on this record. The beats on Ultra Fantasy Ruby Red produced by Junos are consistently interesting and like I said earlier have maybe a bit more of an industrial edge to them than some other Digicore albums you may be familiarized with. And Jade's vocal work, although not super complex or traditionally impressive from a sort of theory perspective or anything like that, are again consistently very engaging throughout the record as she embraces a lot of those, once again, Digicore influences with the differently pitched vocals and a consistent sense of very honest vocal delivery throughout this entire record, thus adding a sort of scrappy, more DIY quality to her actual presence on the record, which is nice to see because I think that really does work with this record beautifully and allows it to come across like the very genuine and personable album that it is. And I mean, sure, I could totally sit here and point out smaller things that you might not like about this album, but to be totally honest, I think whether or not you like this album is determined based on the fact of whether or not you really enjoy similar records like this, if you are familiar with any of them. If you don't like Digicore as a genre, as a movement, if you don't like very heavily distorted electronic influence albums with sing rapping and various forms of extremely personal lyricism, if that's something that doesn't sound like it's appealing to you, I will be honest, you probably won't be into this. But for those among you who may be watching this, including myself, who can appreciate that kind of sound and find that to be an intriguing concept, Ultra Fantasy Ruby Red, I, I don't think you could really possibly go wrong with this in any capacity. So yeah, Jade, under the Pretty Girl Jade name, may be a blossoming artist still at this point, but I really think it is impressive how she is capable of sounding like someone who has been in the industry for a number of years at this point. She's really honed in on a pretty unique sound overall while still sticking to her very internet era kind of roots stylistically, which is a nice thing to see. Not really sacrificing anything for the sake of sounding unique or anything like that. And in turn, this album sounds actually unique. It's not a record that tries to be anything it's not, and Jade doesn't try to be anything that she's not. And in turn, it allows this album to be incredibly honest and open emotionally from a lyrical perspective, incredibly pleasant and consistently engaging from a production and style perspective. As a whole, it's just a really great album, and the only thing I wish it had more of was just time. It's an incredibly short record, and if you don't have the time to give it a listen, then... I mean, I don't know what to tell you, man. I, I just don't think you got time to listen to music, period. So yeah, if you want to go into a record that sounds like anything that I've just described, talking about topics like suffering from insomnia, suffering from mental struggles, suffering from gender dysphoria, suffering from a loss of faith in the world and humanity, while at the same time maintaining this degree of hope that you can stay strong enough to make it through and to create art like this that can express those extremely negative feelings, this is pretty much a perfect album for you. I don't really know what else to tell you. And big thank you in particular to Jade for actually reaching out to me and sending me her record here. I am really excited to see what she does in the future. I think she's greatly underappreciated. And if there is one album that you see me talk about on this channel in 2024 that you've never heard of that you decide you want to check out because I made it sound interesting, then please, let, let, let it be this one, please. I'm going to give this record four stars out of five. With that being said, that is the end of this album review. Thank you for watching the Infinite Jukebox, and I'll see you in the next one.